Let's do it then. Let's go on a family fishing holiday. Yeah! When I look back over the last seven years at the amazing fishing trips we've shared together as a family, I can't help but smile. Those trips, both in the UK and over in Europe, really have created the most amazing memories for Chloe, the girls and myself, and it's all down to angling. Time spent outdoors, as a family, at beautiful places, are what we need in our lives to fulfil happiness, especially after all the lockdowns and restrictions we faced. It was time to load up the van, pack the bags, as we set off on another family fishing holiday. We are finally in the car. How much do you need this, babe? A lot. We are an hour and a half late, though. We are very, very <laughs> late. But we're going. Girls, are you excited? Yeah! How excited on a scale of one to ten? Ten. Ten. Ten out of ten. It's a straight ten out of ten. That means we're going to hit the road, go and get some supplies, and head to our first destination. Let's do it. Let's go on a family fishing holiday. Yeah! We set off from home, sort of midday Thursday morning, about two hours later than hoped, uh, classic. It, it took longer than I thought to play Tetris with the van, interlocking all the luggage and the sleep systems and bivvies. Yeah, but eventually the van was packed to the rafters and we headed off on a four odd hour journey up north to Westmore Farm Fishery. Now I've heard a lot about this complex over the years, just never really had the opportunity to get up there, but spoke to Lee, quite some months back and he invited us to come and fish one of his new lakes. Um, the, the lake in question is called Jackie's Pool. He built it in memory of his mum. And it's not just any old fishing lake, it is mind blowing. Um, I knew a little bit about the venue before going there and the accommodation he's put on there is actually two, would you believe it, Asda freezer 40 foot containers. Well, when you see the place now, you would never imagine it, but that is how life started there. Um, it's very, very young. The, the lake's only sort of a year and a half old, as is the accommodation. And Lee and his team have pulled out all the stops to make it into something, yeah, mind-blowing, absolutely beautiful that I'm sure his mum would be super, super proud of. Arriving at the venue, we we're all very tired, but also very excited to meet with Lee, get shown around the accommodation. Two amazing bedrooms, a great big open plan living and kitchen area, a huge veranda, that of course overlooked a fantastic lake. And Lee gave us loads of time, really, really lovely gentleman, and took all four of us for a big walk around the lake, pointing out various features, bars, plateaus, shallow areas, deep areas. And as we were walking around, we also noticed a fish or two as well. So I was itching to, to get a little bit of bait knocked up and go with the girls and prime some areas, find some spots, and get ready for our sort of three night stay ahead of us. For now, it's that big van sort out. Are you gonna help me, girls? Yeah. Get this van unloaded, get the girls settled in. Clyde can cook us a little bit of tea, and I might chuck a couple of rods out. The great thing about staying here is there's amazing beds and fridge freezer and sofa and outside sofa, which means I don't need to get the moon chairs out, nor the sleep systems, nor the big base camp shelter. Yeah, it's really, really convenient coming to somewhere like this to do a little bit of fishing. Got the essentials out, which is rods, carp care, bait, and the next job for me is absolutely while the girls are chilling inside doing a little bit of drawing, have another walk round, and probably another walk round, and maybe even a third walk round. I'll take a rod with me with just a bare lead to have a feel. I might take a long pole to have a little bit of a prod, and of course I'm gonna knock up a bucket of bait, some maggots, some hemp, some corn, and plenty of squid flake, a little bit of pellet, and see if we can get a little bit of interest going in these sort of early few hours. And try and nick an early bite to be fair. There's a possibility I won't fish tonight. I'd be a lot happier prepping some areas, getting those fish confident feeding there, and waiting for Barn to turn up in the morning and we can get a bit of action on camera. So without further ado, let's knock up some gear. So yeah, we had a big lap round, oh, two or three times actually, finding these likely looking areas, prepping them up before Chloe gave us a big whistle because tea was ready. Headed back to the accommodation, had a beautiful meal sitting around with the bifolds all open, overlooking the lake. It really was a wonderful evening. The girls jumped in the hot tub before bed, then we sat around the fire pit. They got nice and toasty and warm before. We put them down for the night, jumped in the hot tub ourselves. And yeah, by about 11 o'clock, we were both absolutely shattered and I decided that I wouldn't take the fishing any further on that particular evening. I'd go and bait one more time, keeping those spots topped up with just a little bit of food and the plan was to crack on and start fishing properly the following day. Mm. 
I set my alarm for four o'clock on Friday morning, super excited to get up, prepare the rods, get some rigs tied. And yeah, it was a bit of an anti-climax to say the least. My alarm didn't actually wake me up. I was awoken by the heavy thud of rain. It was absolutely chucking it down. Again, the particular bedroom we slept in, you could look right out over the lake and the surrounding countryside. And yeah, it was just sheeting down. So I decided, nah. Even me, with all the enthusiasm and motivation in the world, I was gonna go back to sleep for a couple of hours and hopefully let that miserable weather pass. Short while later, I did get up. The rain hadn't passed. The girls, they wouldn't care if it was 30 degrees or minus 10. They just loved being outside. And when they came out on that morning, they were absolutely in their element. The reason being, there was hundreds of tiny baby toads everywhere. And that was them sorted for the rest of the day. They literally crept around, collecting them, building little toad houses, whilst I cracked on and got some rods prepared. Right, I'm gonna tip the rest. Yeah. There you go. Put a little bit more of that in. Great. What a lovely mix. Imagine if you were a carp swimming around, what would you do if you found that? Eat it. Would you? Mm -hmm. Right, should we go and throw some in? Yeah. Come on then. Yeah, we could just get it back. What can you see on the surface of the water? What keeps popping up? Bubbles. Bubbles. Just, can you see there. them? Look, put the magic glasses on and see if you can see any different coloured water. That's it. Just there. Perfect. Right, next spot. Can you feel the mud? Just gent nice and gently. Can you feel it going into that mud? So you look at that. Look that how soft is quite it is. Disgusting. Yeah, so really soft. And if it's really soft, if I put my fishing rig in it, sometimes it can disappear and the fish will never find it. So that's why I'm looking for an area that's a bit harder. So my fishing rig will go on top of it and the fish will be able to find it. Right, clean your hands off. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one? Let me give it some. Oh, there we go. Perfect. With the rigs and rods now all prepared and the girls very, very difficult to get back into the house because they're too busy collecting all these toads, we eventually sat down for some brunch mid-morning, had some nice food. Look at the size of... That's ginormous! I know! Before Barn turned up to sort of take the responsibility of the filming work off us and yeah, I was going to spend the next sort of 24 hours documenting what we were up to. Yummy. <laughs> this must be the cold box so they've got ice in to keep it all cold. Yeah. How did they know you liked milkshakes? <laughs> Everyone likes milkshakes. True. It's like a happy meal, isn't it? Do you want to use the scissors to it? Barn and I then spent probably the next three or four hours doing pieces to camera, you know, general filming responsibilities before later on that afternoon, we decided we'd head out, get the girls out and about, stretch their legs properly, and we headed off to Grimsby. It was a pretty miserable, quiet, drive into the town. Um, again, it, it hadn't stopped raining, it was just lashing down and we were all quite quiet and I think all of us were thinking exactly the same thing. What are we doing going to the beach in these sorts of conditions? We arrived and it was bleak, man. Big winds, waves, horrible, freezing cold. Um, but yeah, found a really nice um, fish and chip restaurant on the pier. That was really cool. Went in there, had a meal together before heading down onto the beach. We'd done some paddling, went into the arcades. Yeah, made the, the best of a bad situation. Rounding it off with some ice cream and candy floss. Exactly what you do when you go to those kind of seaside resorts. We got back to the accommodation and the weather had picked up a little bit. It had stopped raining, but it was still quite overcast. And it was now time to get those girls to bed. They were totally shattered and to do a little bit of fishing myself. The area I decided to, to concentrate on wasn't directly in front of the house, even though through convenience, you know, that's where I would have fished normally. The fish just weren't there. I'd watched them the previous evening and they were sort of consolidated in the second part of the lake, um, an area that's a little bit deeper 
and they just seem to be really content there. So that's where I started off my, my actual fishing. Um, very, very simple tactics, just utilizing the bushwhacker, shipping out very, very discreetly into the area that they've been showing that previous evening, dropping the rig, short slip D twister, uh, armor link rig with a lead clip set up and a section of tubing. The reason I opted for the lead clip with a sort of long range of lead as opposed to my more common sort of inline setup was because I couldn't be 100% sure on how sort of soft it was out there or how deep that softer substrate was. And by utilizing the lead clip in that style of lead, I just feel it, it plugs that little bit better into the bottom and doesn't drag the rig in so much. And it didn't take long to get that first bite, probably less than an hour in fact. And yeah, as I say, it didn't take long, less than an hour, had an awesome take, got on the rod, and uh, I did try to get Chloe to do it, but she's good as gold like that. She's kind of got a rule in her head, if whoever picks that rod up, it's their fish. So yeah, I was on the rod. I need to tighten the drag a little bit. That was a rip of on, wasn't it? It was a pretty good battle. The fish are quite young, new. They haven't been hammered. Uh, I'm not sure if this one has been caught before or not, but it certainly gave a good account for itself. And yeah, as it, sort of neared closer to the net. Chloe and I were both like, wow, it's a mega one, mega, mega scaly one. Mega, isn't it? You're the best, dear. Uh, and it exactly was that. A, a real nice mid-20, proper scaly, big, deep shoulders, and certainly a fish of the future for, for Jackie's pool. It's gonna be a massive carp one day. What an amazing start. The gamble paid off, gave me plenty of free food. What a start. Thanks, Lee. It was now approaching nine o'clock. Uh, I'd planned to sort of ride it out until 10 when it got dark, <clears throat> but I wasn't actually gonna fish the night. Um, I was gonna have a real good go the following day. That was gonna be my fishing day. Um, at this time of the year, I don't like to retain them through the hours of darkness, certainly not for any long periods of time. So I was happy to reel those rods in, bait the areas again, and sit down with Chloe and Barn and have a, a glass or two of wine and just a general catch up because I haven't seen Barn for some time. And that's exactly what we did. It was a really, really lovely evening. I woke on Saturday morning at Jackie's Pool, not quite as early as I'd hoped, maybe that was one or two glasses of wine too many, but yeah, I was up and about, got those rods set up. Some of those rods were fished on the washing line and that involved casting across to the opposite bank, uh, walking around there, setting up a washing line clip, which is basically two sort of rubber pads with a tensioning device that I can clip the line into. And what that allows me to do is fish in the edge, but not cut across the lake and risk getting lots of line bites or potentially even spooking those fish because of the line cutting through the water. Some of the rods were set up like that, others were just fish very, very short on the sort of marginal shelf and it didn't take long for one of those rods to rattle off and that one was Chloe's. Um, she did it with Fern, they both did it, massive team effort and caught a really, really lovely Jackie's pool carp. What a lovely morning, all sat around the table, having some breakfast, it's so nice, you can just look out of the windows. And yeah, started to notice a few fish had moved into this sort of front area, and lo and behold, one of the rods sort of absolutely melted off. Chloe got straight on it, it was one of the washing line rods, little 12 mil, squid bottom bait, and then Fernie brought it in. Well done, sweetheart. <laughs> Did good, didn't you? Yeah. Beautiful. Hey. No, bye fishy. Well done, Sam. The fish stick. 
didn't want to swim away. After the disturbance of that fish, it did go a little bit quiet. There was the odd sort of bits of bubbles coming up, uh, the odd little bit of, of different coloured water, but I didn't feel there was a huge amount of fish in that front pool. The plan was I was going to move across to the back, but before I knew it, another rod did rip off. This time it was Maya's turn. This one's for Maya. Maya, can. It's my fish. All right, I don't want it to. I don't want it to go over the other line. We need to keep it this way, darling. I am. Again, she did a fantastic job playing it in. Oh, that! Oh my word! Are we gonna net him? Yeah. Right, no more reading, Maya. <laughs> yeah, he's beautiful, Maya. Yeah. That's beautiful. That's big though. Yeah. <laughs> Lee really has gone above and beyond to, to stock the venue with stunning fish, a lot of which he's born on the site himself. He's grown them on from tiny little eggs, he's hand selected them, and he really has put the creme de la creme in there. And this one that Maya caught was, was no exception to that. A stunning fish that I'm sure one day is going to make a lot of people very, very happy. This one looks like a banana shape. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's slide him out. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Water on the lens. Got Barnes camera. Oh, you've got a bit on your glasses. <laughs> right. Yeah, it passes them here, they're all underneath <laughs> it. Yeah. I've got to do this. Big smiles at Mummy! First we were doing really fun dancing and the beepers went off and I caught a fish. Well done you, sweetheart, and it's a stunning one. Should we let Mummy have a and go And tomorrow it's like a little like, gold bit there. Mm -hmm. That is actually quite nice. Ow, that's heavy. Good girl. Well done. Well We're now into Saturday afternoon and the girls took a little break away from the lake, heading off with Lee to go and meet his wife and daughter who've got lots of horses. Um, yeah, they loved it. They got to feed them, stroke them, and they came back to the lake absolutely buzzing that they got to see these amazing horses. We headed back to the house. Barn had to head off, so we decided to, to have a barbecue before we left, chuck some ribs on, knocked up a few jacket potatoes, Girls jumped in the hot tub, they do love that hot tub. And yeah, we soaked up the evening sun before bidding barn farewell and allowing me to get those rods finally prepared and positioned for, for our last night's stay at Jackie's Pool. Sadly, our last night there was very, very quiet, but just before packing up, I managed to pull it out of the bag. I'd got everything loaded into the motor. Uh, that's the great thing about staying somewhere like Jackie's Pool. Um, I didn't have to get the sleep systems out or set up a great big gazebo or base camp. It, it was quite an easy pack down in that morning. And yeah, just before leaving, I had a final take, a really, really mega one. The girls were up and about. Did you have a good sleep? And uh, yeah, it was just a lovely way to end a sort of quick three night stay at an incredible venue. Has it been one of the best fishing places to stay ever? Yeah! <laughs> it has been amazing, yeah. Uh, I know Chloe doesn't want to leave. Chloe, do you want to leave? Absolutely not. No. Chloe wants to do the rest <laughs> of our holiday here yeah, and I don't blame her, it, it really is incredible. Do you want to grab your dorsal fin fern? Mummy can get a nice picture, big smiles. It definitely is somewhere we'd love to revisit again. The accommodation was absolutely top notch. The fishery was stunning. I think probably one of my favorite bits was the wildflowers. I mentioned earlier just how young the lake is. You'd never think it, you know, when we arrived, both Chloe and I were like, it looks like it's been here for years. And that's, you know, down to a lot of Lee's hard work and the lads that work with him. But I just think this sowing of the wildflower seeds just gave it that magical, magical touch. Bid Lee farewell. And I'd be lying if I said there wasn't some very sad faces that morning. Um, none more so with Chloe. She really did fall in love with the place. It, it was perfect in so many ways. 
and I was dragging her away from some top class accommodation in beautiful countryside to now go camping. <laughs> now when Chloe and I first got together like 15 years ago, we used to do some pretty extreme sessions up to sort of two, two and a half weeks on the bank without really even seeing civilization. She's traveled all over Europe with me fishing, but she's done with it. She's done with the crazy, stupid Alan antics of packing up and moving and moving here and this, everything's just a mission. And I know she was kind of dreading it a little bit because for the next five, six nights, we were kind of roughing it, if you could call it that, in comparison to where we'd left. But onwards and upwards, the girls didn't mind. They were well up for a bit of camping. And we headed off on a two hour drive to go and meet up with a very good friend of ours, Nigel Woodcock, who's also a salesman for Nash Tackle, to meet with his young family and spend a day doing some really cool things with them. We arrived at Nigel's house at about 11.30, got introduced to Joe, his lovely wife, and his two boys, Freddie and Henry, which are similar ages to Myron and Fern and they just got on like a house on fire. Immediately they're running around and playing together. It was just so nice to see. After a quick brew, we jumped back in the motors and Nigel took us for a treat. Now, when I spoke to Nigel about coming up, he said to me, would the girls like to do some horse riding? Because Nigel's wife keeps horses. Oh, I said, Nigel, they'd love to. That would really, really, you know, put a huge smile on their faces. They've done a little bit of it before, but yeah, they'd love to. So Nige took it upon himself to book the girls in for a one hour horse riding lesson, but didn't decide to tell us that he'd also book Chloe and I in. So when we arrived at the stable, it was a little bit of a shock to me, but I was soon thrust upon this giant horse, thinking that everyone was gonna get walked on a lead. You know, like when you go to the beach and they walk you on a donkey, that's what I thought it was gonna be. No, they just give me this horse, got some boots on, got told how to hold the reins, and off we went for an hour's trek up through the hills, across the common. It, it was amazing. I actually really, really enjoyed it. Did some trotting, up, down, up, down, and learnt an awful lot. Yeah, it was just a great way to spend an hour. Um, got off the horses, went and had a nice pub lunch before going to visit uh, Wales' largest waterfall, which was breathtaking. I do love a sweeping lane country drive, and we arrived at this particular waterfall, and yeah, it was just incredible. Um, told the girls it's where fairies come from, so really set the seed. And yeah, went to look at that, went exploring, played in the rock pools, done some paddling, skimmed some stones, before heading across to Nigel's Lake where he fishes to do the night there. And this is where the roughing it starts. We arrived, I opened the back of that van, it was just packed to the rafters and I needed to get in to get everything out. So it was a complete strip out, set up a gazebo, got mine and Chloe's sleep systems out, got the beds out for the girls, set all that up before dinner arrived and we all sat down together, the two families, had a lovely takeaway before a few tears bidding Henry and Freddie and Joe farewell. The girls really, really did get on with them. We vowed to go back and see them very, very soon to do it all again. With the girls gone, Nige, you're such a top bloke, bro. He had one more surprise lined up for us, and that was, would you believe it, bear in mind we're carp fishing at a lake. A friend of his had a cocktail bar, and he came down to prepare some mocktails for the girls, some non-alcoholic ones, which they absolutely loved, and a couple of different specialities for Chloe, Nige, and myself. A wonderful evening, I got the rods out, dead, dead simple, used the bushwhacker, set some little traps, little handful of flake, uh, and yeah, went to sleep that night with a big smile on my face after having a, a really, really amazing day. I woke at first light, a little bit despondent, nothing had happened, no liners through the night, but it kind of made a lot of sense. 
The kids had made a phenomenal amount of disturbance and I feel that had probably pushed a lot of the fish down towards the other end of the lake. It was certainly where I was seeing them showing sort of two thirds to three quarters of the way down. Um, so yeah, very, very little action from me, even on the liners front. Nigel on the other hand, he had managed to nick one, which was really, really cool. So we went around to see Nigel's fish, done some pictures, slipped that one back before having a couple of brews, some sausage sandwiches, and eventually bidding Nigel farewell. Just bidded Nigel farewell, can't express this enough. Joe, Nigel, and the boys, thank you for the best day ever yesterday. Did you have a nice time, girls? Yeah! It was amazing. Uh, the fishing was just a small part of it last night. It was all about seeing those guys and spending some time with them. Right, we're gonna head off now. Total Angling Shrewsbury, need some fresh maggots and a few other bits before going to our final destination of the road trip. We've got five nights now at the incredible Dorford Pools. <laughs> The drive to the next venue, luckily after some pretty big drives so far, was only about an hour and with a stop off to grab some supplies, a quick stop at the pub for a nice lunch and a call into Total Angling in Shrewsbury to get some more maggots and to get the girls some little lures for their drop shot in, we eventually arrived at this place. The amazing, amazing Dorford Pool. I say it like it's the best lake ever. Chloe, she was a little bit like, Where's the house? Where's the hot tub? Where's the electricity? But to be fair, once we'd had a walk around it, she was absolutely made up that we decided to come and spend some time here. We met up with Ed, the owner, again, absolute top bloke who gave us all the time in the world, showing us around the fishery, pointing out some features, showing us where the shower, yep, yeah, that's right, they've got a shower here, even though there's no electric on site and the composting toilet. Clean and tidy, uh, uh, composting toilet. Perfect. Just, sort of stand. Just, just use it and chuck a bit of comp uh, sawdust down after you. No flush. No flush now, I'm afraid. <laughs> before leaving us in peace for another absolutely monumental van unload. This one did involve taking absolutely everything out. And after really assessing the situation, where would be best to pitch up, we decided we were gonna go and spend the next five nights camping on the island. With all the gear lugged across there, it was a case of as quickly as possible making Chloe and the girls feel nice and comfortable. So base camp completely erected. Chloe and I would sleep in one of the pods. The girls would sleep in the other. We set a couple of moon chairs up in the middle with a bank life cook station organizer, ground sheet down, basically home from home. What more could anyone want when going away fishing? It was then time to crack on and knock up another bucket of bait and have a wander around and start to bait some areas. Of course, I had my glasses on. I also took a leading rod with me just to feel the substrate. And yeah, started to introduce some bait into a few different areas. By which time it was approaching six o'clock, called an Indian takeaway. We sat around together as a family, had tea, got the girls to bed before cracking on with the fishing preparations. I decided to stick a pair of waders on, grab that big long landing net pole, attach a weed rake onto the end of it, and then spent many, many hours, probably three or four hours, going round and round and round, trying to ascertain the best plan of attack for my next sort of four or five nights here. It is weedy, it is very, very silty. It's a very, very old, mature lake, so you've got trees all the way around it, branches falling off, in the autumn and winter and spring winds and storms. You've got the leaf debris. I say you've got the weed growing. Uh, to be able to present a rig effectively, I needed to be totally confident in my mind that what I was fishing over was presentable. Some of the spots I fished, you know, I was you know, creating massive piles of weed and branches and sticks and twigs to make sure those areas were fishable. But I went to sleep that night content that I'd grafted. You know, I'd put the effort in to finding those good areas. Uh, I topped them up before bed. It was now sort of midnight, something like that, maybe even later, and decided, don't put any rods out, Alan. You've got a few days ahead of you. Get some sleep and see what the morning brings. So I'm just having a creep round. It's the third time I've been round this morning. Looking for fish, there's one just out there now.
the bulk of them seem to be down the other end. But this end up here with this little dot island does look really nice. I've got a washing line just down the bank there, directly in front of the base camp. Girls are just getting ready. We're off out for the day today. Going to Bewilderwood, they're gonna love it. It's basically a bit like that, to be fair. Giant hay area covered in tree houses and rope swings and bridges and loads of fun. But before we go, let me get some bait in, get back in this evening, finally get a rod out on these washing line setups. And there go. Well spotted. Oh yeah. Yeah, there's definitely fairies living in there. Fern, Fern's <gasps> getting them ferns. <laughs> <laughs> Mishmash maze, that looks like tons of fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This way, that way, or not sure. This, this way. way, go on then. Get in! <laughs> this way. Fern, get in! Oh, would you do that? <laughs> Dead ends, good ways. Come on, this way. This way. Now we've got it. Yeah. Hip hip. Hooray. That was tiring. Oh, we The girls just didn't want to leave. They could have stayed there all day, to be fair. But we eventually got on the road about three o'clock, headed off to find a nice pub to have some lunch. I grabbed the work box, sat there tying some rigs, even gave my good friend Snowy a call, who just lives local. He came up and had a pint with us before eventually getting back here. And yeah, me and Chloe had our minds blown. I sort of immediately ran off around the lake looking for the carp. Chloe just walked back onto our little island, gave me a whistle, I come back round. There's what? Loads of fish. What carp? Mm. Come on, show me these carp then. Tiptoe, tiptoe, tiptoe. Oh my God. What? I oh, don't scare them, don't scare them, they've already spoked. Ah, oh, babe, flow no, to They're not, though, they're not. Flow to rotor. Yeah, they're not. They'll come back, like they're just loving that sun. Right, I'm going to give you a bag, then you can get them going. Look at them out here as well. <gasps> and they were all just there, just drifting around underneath the surface. They were so content. So I gave Chloe a bag of slicker floaters, some riser pellets, a catapult. We managed to get the girls to bed and she sat there, fair play to a man. She put the, put the effort in for a good hour and a half, maybe a bit longer, little and often, feeding, feeding, getting them concentrated into an, an area, watching the way the wind was drifting so she wasn't losing the bait, you know, out of the swim and, and basically work those fish to a point that they'd become catchable. Yeah, a take, that was a take. Perfect, perfect. Um, I don't think many people float fish here. Classic carp venue, you know, they don't take a floater in here. Um, I get the impression that, that that's the, the impression most anglers would give you. They'd come here, they'd try for five minutes, the odd one might take and then nothing. But I know very well that when you're float fishing, especially for sort of carp that haven't been float fished a lot before, it can take hours even to really get them going. And she'd done just that. So what would any good partner do? They would let her catch the first one, wouldn't they? snaked her up man, I totally sheeped her up. I come in the swim, gave her a rod. She started, I don't know, had a cast or two, and then I was like, just have a cast myself. And I booked one. Do you want it? Again, I did offer the rod to her, but she was like, no, 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 you have it. I still feel a bit guilty about it now, but yeah, absolutely mega battle, stripping line everywhere. Oh my God. I set myself a target of eight o'clock to get the rods out. I did want to try and nick one on the float beforehand. To be fair, I feel, well, classic Alan, to be fair, just sheeped up Chloe totally. She's been feeding them for about an hour and a half. And uh, yeah, I've come in and nicked one. Very, very difficult. They're taking the odd one, dropping down. I keep saying to Chloe, she's smashing it, you know, feeding so good, watching the wind. And uh, 
it's a real good chance with the temperature now dropping we've had a really hot day that we could get a little bit of float action almost into dark but i'm going to leave crow to it now photograph this one if i can land it first Dorford carp so excited and uh, i'm going to go and set the rods up for the night and leave her float fishing what a way to kick things off Dad, we was just, just watching, watching you. you. supposed to be asleep. <laughs> going out for a big day tomorrow, you're going to be shattered. <laughs> Where are we going to sleep? Very well, you might as well come out and have a photo of me with this fish now, mightn't you? Okay. <sighs> Pete Jam the top some. Well, what a fish to kick things off with here at Dorford Pool. I knew it was full of absolute bangers. And that, <laughs> that's a banger. What do you think, girls? That's quite big. It's a beautiful so one, isn't pretty. it? But more to the point, what are you two still doing up? Um... Hmm, <laughs> well past bedtime. <laughs> right, I'm going to let this one go. Mega, mega carp, and we'll see if we can get mummy one off the surface too. She spent ages feeding them, fair play to her. Dad, what are these little It's all dogs? these beautiful markings. Oh, right, big, big smiles, smiles at mummy, look, big smiles. <laughs> right, say goodbye. Bye bye. The disturbance of catching that fish, it really had spooked them out of the area. As much as they drift back in and take the odd one, the chances of getting another bite on the float looked like they'd all but gone. So it was then a case of getting the rods out for the night. I mentioned I'd located in lots of different areas. Some of those um, were out in the lake where I'd had a cast and felt an area that was sort of soft silt and not too weedy but the bulk of them, just for my own peace of mind and ease of angling, were right in the edge. I'd been in the waders, as I said, and I'd felt the harder areas. I'd also used the rake to clean off other areas, but they weren't all directly around the island. Some of them were on the actual main bank itself, and to fish these spots, again, I adopted the washing line. So some of the rods were placed with the washing line tactic, some of the rods were placed just fishing very, very short, but I went to sleep that night, again about one o'clock in the morning, really, really confident. I felt I'd put maximum effort in the previous night. I'd been topping up the areas with bait. My placement, presentation, everything just seemed perfect. I really couldn't have tried any harder. Good morning, Wednesday morning, quick update. Yeah, got the rods out last night, obviously caught that mega mid-20. And yeah, went to sleep about one o'clock full of confidence. Thought my location, areas, rigs, everything was bang on. The fish were about, saw so much of the lake stops yesterday. But yeah, woke up this morning and uh, hadn't caught anything. Small water carp fishing, eh? Uh, they're obviously on edge, a little bit spooky, because you're real good and out here now. Um, anyway, we're off out all day today. I've just baited all the spots so they can be left in peace, get back, definitely jump straight on the float of fishing and then get the rods out for the night. We headed out that day again, left uh, here about nine o'clock that morning and went to Chester Zoo. So another fantastic day for the girls. Been to lots of zoos up and down the length of the country, but not been to Chester before, seen it on TV, and it was every bit as good as the TV show. Um, in fact, I'd go as far as saying it's probably one of the best that we'd ever been to. Stayed there the best part of the day before leaving, finding another lovely pub to, to have an evening meal at. Again, I got the work box out, tied a few more rigs before filling our bellies right up and heading back to the lake. Kind of buzzing really that the fish were gonna be in a similar sort of situation as the day before. We'd had very, very warm temperatures and I expected to pull back through the gates and find them all sort of milling around again, but they weren't. It was very, very different. Chloe tried for about 45 minutes this time to get them feeding on the island. Absolutely no interest whatsoever. I set to walking round and round to see if there's any opportunities that way. I did manage to get a few fish feeding. I kind of blew one chance because I was trying to film myself. I had one camera here and a camera here and I just faffed around too much setting the cameras up and blew that chance. I then had a second opportunity at a particular carp. Now this fish, it just ticks every box for me. It's a big one. It's an ornamental. It's a linear. It's called the white whale and it's over 30 pounds. I managed to get it reluctantly feeding on the odd slicker floater. I made that crucial cast, got everything into position, and I watched it come over to my hook bait. My heart was just racing, cool. and he's just come up, looked at it, and dropped back down again. 
it was intense stuff and one side of me i badly want to catch that fish it is my target for here if i could catch one it would be that one but on the other side i'm also glad i didn't because my camera skills are pretty dreadful and it'd be much better to do it now today now that tony's here to help with the filming so with that chance kind of gone i've done another few laps never really had any more opportunities it was then a case of going through that process again of getting those rods out washing lines casting across to the far bank walking around retrieving the lead attaching my rig shipping everything into position making sure i'm fishing setting the tension on the clip and then just shipping out some other rigs directly to the islands themselves. Yeah, 1.30 finish. I couldn't be any more content. And I think in fishing, for me anyway, to angle well, to get good results, I've got to be confident. I've got to be confident in the area I've decided to fish, the bait I'm using, my rig selection, how's it presented, my line lay. There's a number of different boxes I have to tick when I place a rod. And I've got to be able to stand back at it, look at it, look back on the placement of it and and be a hundred percent on it and i went to sleep that night a hundred percent i couldn't do any more morning first day morning and i've just had a proper wake up call not one take but two takes both fish are just resting in the net there now uh, yeah first rod washing line a really good fight, managed to coax it round some trees into the centre of this swim to give myself a little bit more room. Didn't really work because there's a rod out to the left and a rod out to the right. And the fish kept picking up those lines, not moving the rig or anything, but just brushing on the line. I was quite good with controlling it left to right. Um, so yeah, I was getting quite a lot of beeps through the battle. And then just as I was sort of quite close to netting it, I had a a lot more beats than I should and I knew that the fish wasn't anywhere near the rod and yeah it turned out to be a second take so yeah quickly got the fish in the net and just about got on that second rod in time to keep it away from the island snags and yeah double take check this out yeah just like that those kind of liners plus I was doing it myself with the fish brushing on the line but yeah result two nice fish both flip to be sort of low 20s and yeah the light is just starting to break through mega morning chorus and best of all Tony's turning up today so don't have to do any more filming so I'm gonna do these two get the rods repositioned stick the kettle on first coffee of the morning yeah awesome first one of the morning of a really nice brace not quite as big as I thought, just over 18 pounds. But what an epic carp, and what a great way to start the day. Yeah, washing line tactic for this one. Scope X squid, little 12 miller, slip D rig. And then, yeah, section of Klingon Lido, just cast it across to the other side, going round, retrieving the rig, shipping it all out, clipping it into position. Yeah, epic. The other one, equally as impressive. And the second part of the brace. Ah, oh, Ed, you've smashed it, mate. You've picked all the best carp to stock into the door for pull. Look at that. What a fish. What a second part of the brace. Exactly the same tactics in terms of 12 mil squid hard on, little twist of slip D, cling on leader, drop off in line. But this time, instead of fishing the washing line, it was shipped directly out under the. Oh, savage liners. <laughs> directly out underneath that island where that other rod is now beeping away. Yeah, there's every possibility. Have another bite, I think. Wonder if I can do it before I get that first brew on. Mega. The girls woke up, we had some breakfast. I decided to do a little bit of stalking. Um, simple tactic, size 12 floater claw, 10 pound zig flow. And my classic maggots on the, the hook rig, just looking for opportunities. Found two fish up in the shallows, puffing away on the silt, managed to get the maggots into position and hooked one of those. Wicked battle in and out of the weed. The girls came over and netted another stunning fish, man. They really are beautiful in here. Fish number four, this one was stalked, slow sinking maggots, ever faithful. Found a couple of fish up in the shallows, puffing on silt, and yeah, just let her, all the maggots flutter down in front of them. Size 12 claw, and a 10 pound zig fly sawn off, just the way I like catching them. And you named this one, haven't you? What have you called him? Strawberry. Because we had lovely strawberries for breakfast. 
And with that fish slipped back, tone turned up and it takes you up to, to where we are now. I am really, really excited because now is my fishing time. Last night and the next sort of couple of nights are my sort of, my bit of me time to a degree. As much as I'm still gonna spend a lot of time with Chloe and the girls, Chloe knows now I'm gonna fish hard, really hard, round and round and round, looking for opportunities. Wanna do some float fishing, wanna get some zig rod set up, wanna do some lift float fishing. I just wanna stay on my toes and make the most of this incredible venue. Got a bucket of gear mixed up, primarily Scopic Squid Flake, few 12 millers, two and six mil pellets, sweet corn, and plenty of syrup. That liquid, once everything else has been eaten, will have seeped into the, the bottom substrate, meaning there's always a level of attraction there. Um, got that, got my baiting pouch, really important. Catapult, slicker floaters, riser pellets. It has turned nice now, I'm gonna get a drift on. And yeah, most important of all my glasses. And I'm gonna take you around now and show you Dorfoot Pool. I love fishing little venues like this. Uh, it's an exclusive booking for, for us as a family, which means we we can utilize the whole lake it's only small it's got three lush dot islands on it one of which that we're actually living on it's intimate it's overgrown it's weedy it's a perfect home for a carp to live in and there's 60 odd of them in here you know and mega mega ones um, arriving i had five nights didn't fish the first night basically utilize that first 24 hour period to learn the lake. I want to understand these 60 fish. Where do they like spending their time at certain times of the day? Have they got particular patrol routes? And basically getting as close to that water's edge as possible to be able to see things that people possibly would ignore. There's a path here, you know, a lot of people will stick to that path. I'm not trashing it. I'm looking for convenient places where different species of plant might stop and start and just creeping in and really, really looking at what is here. You just never know. You might pop your head over a particular bush or, or round a, a bend into a bay and there's the biggest fish in the lake. And by constantly looking and checking like this, it is when surprises are thrown up at you, opportunities are thrown up at you. Just putting in tiny little handfuls. No need to go mad. Because I'm revisiting and checking, I can see if it's gone. Um, the carp have either been in there and eaten it, or the birds have, so it's worth keeping an eye on the birds. You don't want all your bait going to them. If I get to a spot and there's still bait there, I might be starting to question uh, how productive that certain area is. Maybe the fish just aren't visiting there, but the important thing is you're keeping on top of it and checking the efforts that you've put in with regards to finding those spots and baiting. You can literally hear a pin drop here. It's so beautiful. There's a few out there. line clip from last night. This is the proper shallow, it's now it's just literally sloping off here, really, really silty. You've got the inflow here, lots of fresh mint, it's proper nice. They have got in here, not in numbers. It looks like the best area of the lake to me as a fisherman. Uh, they actually are preferring the other end at the moment. If I, if I had to call it, I'd say this is the going end, but right here, right now, they're not. It's not to say they couldn't tip up at any points. So I've definitely always made sure in these real shallow water, there's always a little bit of bait down there for them. And there is yet another lap completed. Another little bit of introduction of bait. Uh, I can't stress it enough. It's, it's my kind of go-to tactic. Get that bait in there, have a little look. Um, keep an eye on it. Some of them might be good, some of them not. There's a spot on the end here, looks fantastic. Not had any bait taken off it. Yeah, keep an eye on those spots. But for now, it's time to get the rods prepared for the night, a few fresh rigs tied, and uh, get that barbecue on, and have a lovely evening, keeping our fingers crossed. These carp play ball, they stop being so moody, and we might get another bite or two in the night. You right, girls? Yeah? just crept into position, not casting a shadow across the water, basically trying everything I can to not spook them. Tactics are really simple, got my baiting pouch, slicker floaters, riser pellets. I'm watching for the drift, which way is the wind blowing, feeding up of the wind so it's carrying the baits down across in front of me. 
Um, yeah, there's a few fish out there, they're not very receptive to feeding. Um, but yeah, the sun's come out, it just seems right and proper to do a little bit of sort of stalking and floater fishing. I've got two rods with me, both two pound sawn offs, 10 pound zig flow, little GT 4000 reels. And on one of the setups, I've literally just tied a hook on and that is for free lining. I'll just attach a soft couple floater by putting it onto the bend of the hook just to expose the point and I can free line that out with minimal disturbance. On the other rod, I've got a very small controller float just locked in place with two ledger stops. And that's if the fish are beyond sort of 25 meters and I need to get that additional distance. It's a case now of being as quiet as I possibly can, keeping the bait going in, plop, 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 and letting it drift over the top of these fish to see if we can stem a bit of a reaction and try and nick a bite before I go around and do a barbecue for the girls. It's gone again, it's gone again. That was a case of classic persistence. They're so not up for it. I really don't know what's wrong with them. You know, two nights ago, me and Chloe really had them not having it, but with careful introduction of riser pellet, we coaxed them onto the top, and I don't know what's happened in the last 48 hours, but they've gone really moody. Like, who's gonna squeeze in and help me with the netting? Big lift, big, yes! Well done, sweetheart. What a mega, mega one. Stalk just 10 metres from the bank. To see him come up and take the bait is so, so exciting. Soft hookable floater, 10 pound zig flow, and another mega dwarf pull carp. I'm just getting the rods ready to get out for this evening. Um, yeah, kind of my go-to setup really for bottom bait fishing. As I said, I did the investment on that first evening clearing the area, so I know I can present a rig over the top very, very effectively. On that basis, I've gone for an inline lead setup. It's nice and low profile, sits perfectly on the bottom, whether that be on a very hard bottom or potentially even fall down into some soft silt. Got a length of cling on leader. There is some weed in here. There are some zebra mussels, so I need that abrasion resistance. I'm fishing it drop off again because of the weed and some of the rods I'm fishing tight underneath the, the island canopy. So that'll discharge by simply pulling off there on the take. There's a double ring swivel there and I can lose the lead. I haven't used a soft inline lead insert. I've got a very, very tight fit on the swivel and that is because if I can get away with not losing it, I will. Sometimes you can manage to play the fish in with it just like this. It's only really if that lead gets caught in something, the weed or a snag, then it will discharge off. I've then got my go-to armor link. There's nothing more abrasion resistant out there. Short section of that, little twister, size six, and then a kicker and it's fish slip the arrangement. Normally I'd use a screw, I haven't, and that's because I'm primarily using 12 mil bottom baits. Um, the screws do tend to split them. So I've created my own little hair loop there by taking some 15 pound armor link, tying a loop the perfect length, and that allows me to pierce the boilie, slide it on, very conventional, pop a hair stop in place and secure it into position. So that's my setup for when I'm lowering it into a spot or dropping it from the baiting pole. The other rig I have been using is almost identical. The only difference is I've dropped down from the four ounce lead to a two ounce lead. The setup is exactly the same with regards to the Klingon leader, drop off, double ring swivel, but a much, much shorter section of 20 pound armor link. Um, everything else is exactly the same. And that's because all of that there is getting packed inside a solid bag. I've gone for the lighter lead so when it hits the bottom, it doesn't penetrate into the soft silt too much. It will flutter down and sit and dissolve. And even if there's any weed out there, it means that my hook and my hook bait are protected all the way until it gets to the bottom. It will dissolve, leaving a lovely parcel of food. I'm gonna tie up a couple more fresh rigs, get those rods prepared and get them out for the night ahead. One, two, three. <laughs> oh, perfect. Get the line all sunk down, and then you girls can help me ship this back. That's it, keep it nice and low. I'm gonna do that last one. There we go. The perfect way to get your fishing rig out into the lake. Well, I've cast across to the other side, just using closed little three pound dwarfs. The cast probably 65 meters. I've used a three ounce long range of lead, just tied directly to the 15 pound bullet mono. That's come across here, no problem. I've retrieved that. I can now remove this lead. I don't need that anymore. And I've brought around with me my rig. And I'm just gonna fix onto here. 
the main line. I've got a loop in the Klingon leader. You can loop to loop it on. I like to tie it on with a blood knot, which is round six times. And then back down through the opening at the loop, which creates this bigger loop here. And then I can just pass that tag in back through the loop. Make sure I wet it. Give it a good pull. And that's me now all set up with my rig ready to go. The rig itself now goes into the baiting pole. I'm just going to top it up with a little bit of bait. So I've got my flake in there, some whole boilies, some pellets, a little bit of sweet corn, hemp. Not going mental. Fish just really aren't having it at the moment. So just enough to hopefully induce a quick bite. Then with my left hand, I'm going to make sure I always keep this held in here so it's trapped between my sort of fingers and my palm and then I can just gently ship out like so. As I'm shipping I'm obviously tightening up the line that's going all the way back across to the bank over there so I can pick up the slack that line should just ping up out of the water now. There we go now I'm in direct contact with the rod tip. Keep shipping out. I need to add a few more sections here I've set the drag back at the rod so much so that it is quite tight but it still allows me to be able to pull some line off. So I keep shipping out, pull a bit more off. So I'm going to pop my glasses on now. Um, what I'm looking for is those patrol routes through the weed, uh, the, the motorways basically that the carp are using and I'm just going to discreetly drop this rig into position down there. So we've got a nice clear in there in amongst some dense weed. I can get this into position perfectly. I've got enough slack here that I'm still going to feather it down and let that lead drop down nicely just so I know I'm not landing on a, on a big pile of weed. So I can roll that over now. Empty the spoon. That's got that perfect. The free offerings have all just fluttered down over the top. I can now get the spoon back out of the way. Still keeping hold of this line all the time. Can't let go of that. I can then make sure I've got good line lay going down to the spot. So just make sure that's all slotting in and amongst the weed. This bullet mono is really heavy, so it's sinking down absolutely perfectly there. And then finally, I come up to the washing line clip itself. I've just used a T-peg here in top of a big pole. You've got to make sure the pole's very secured into the ground. And on the clip itself, there's a little tensioning device where I, there's two pads and I put the main line between these soft pads and then I can tighten this tensioning device up and that's closing those pads up and it's gripping the line. It's very, very important that you don't do it too tight, otherwise the fish won't be able to pull uh, the line out of there. And conversely, it's really important you don't do it too loose. There's a, an optimum tension that those pads need to be sat at because I need to keep a lot of tension here on the main line all the way back to the rod, but I need it to be enough that should a fish come, it can pull it out like so. Right, let's light the barbecue. Oh, I ordered us a box of food so we didn't have to go to the supermarket. It meant we didn't need to go out. Yeah, I ordered stuff for a barbecue tonight and then I thought maybe you could cook mummy and daddy breakfast in the morning. So I got all the things you need to cook an English breakfast. Well done! Dad, Fern's eating that coleslaw like she's it never like tasted it's... food. <clears throat> they tap, don't they? Tap, yeah. tap, 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 tap. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I just got that. <laughs> you need to watch your float, Fern. Dad, that already looks like it's ready. But the question is, for a pink one, do you think you can catch four more? Oh, I bet you can. Right, let it cool right down. Give it a blow. <laughs> At some point, you'll be able to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, it's a good base one. Keep that line tight this time. Don't lose it. Look at my perch. It's a fat perch. <laughs> oh, well done, Fern! <laughs> Imagine one of those, the same size as a car. Oh, my word! That would be scary, wouldn't it? That would, it would be 
pretty beautiful though too because it scales. Black stripes. Yeah. It's like got camouflage, hasn't it? Mm. It's well past your bedtime. Yeah, but we're the winners. We're the winners because we caught it first. We really were having the best time perch fishing, which of course turned competitive with prizes in the form of giant marshmallows toasted over an open flame. It brought back fond memories of my own time at that age and just how much I loved being outdoors on the bank at WAM. But before we knew it, the sun was setting and it was well past bedtime yet again and I needed to do some final rig prep in the form of knocking up some solid bags. With the last rod sorted, I couldn't help but think Surely it was only a matter of time. <laughs> Pretty unbelievable really, but then you just never know what's gonna happen next in carp fishing. Tony and I were just discussing, wrapping things up. We'd lost the light now for any more filming. And he explained, oh yeah, we'll just do a bit of voiceover. And I was a little bit, I wouldn't say demoralized, but the lack of activity this evening, it has been non-existent, I mean that. I just went and checked when I was putting out a washing line around the other side, if there was any fish taking floaters that had drifted in, nothing. Have I seen any shows? No. Is there any fins flicking out? No, just dead, it's been dead. And after a really moody day as well, I wasn't holding my hopes up, but <laughs> to place this rod no more than 15 minutes ago. If I'm honest, I thought I was wiped out by a coot. It can sometimes happen with a washing line. A bat or a bird can sort of knock the line, knock it out of the uh, indicator. And that's exactly what I thought would happen. I didn't think I'd be attached to a very angry carp. To say, so far, it's a very promising start to the night ahead. <laughs> Love it. I was just doing my last rod for the evening. <laughs> and yeah, savage drop back, fish on. I thought it was a bird that had sort of disturbed the line and, and broke it out of the clip, but it weren't. It was this mega creature here, and hopefully it's the start of things to come. And having to bite so early on, maybe we'll get another one or even two before the morning. Mega. Well, after releasing that fish last night at about 11.30, I sat there full of excitement, got that rod back out, and yeah, just hoped for another bite. It didn't happen. I eventually drifted off to sleep about one o'clock this morning and was finally awoken just after 3.30 with this incredible creature here. It's so nice to have got amongst a few of them. second of this morning's flurry of hectic action. This incredible, incredible, as Maya would say it, fully scully. Real interesting battle. Again, it was on the washing line. I was awake for it because I just sort of dealt with that first fish of the morning. Classic drop back, line pulled out of the clip. Beep, 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 beep. Went quiet and then started to, to peel off line. But yeah, mega fish. What a morning.
Well, I had to wake the girls up. It's just coming up to 5.30. Definitely gonna regret it later. Big yawn there from Bernie. But I really wanted to show him this mega one. I also think, you know, just in the last 10 minutes, we've had our first bit of fresh in. I can't believe it. We're into July and it looks like they are gonna spawn, which is really, really bizarre. Which means, girls, we're gonna go home. Yeah, we're gonna have to go home 24 hours early, which is a real big shame. I'd love to have stayed here. Look at these fish, man, and caught a few more of them, but I think we'll let them spawn in peace. Have you enjoyed it though? This kiss. Have you loved it? Mega. Bye, Fluffy. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye, <laughs> With the gate shut behind us, we left the Dorford pool carp in peace to spawn and made the big drive back down to Essex, planning one last treat for the girls when they arrived. Chloe had arranged with a number of the girls' parents and their children to come and meet us at Nash HQ for a lovely barbecue and to experience their first ever fishing session. What a lovely evening it was with lots of other excited kids, and mums and dads for that matter, eager to experience their first taste of angling. And what a lovely way to end. Yet again, we'd created so many memories of our own holiday and then to top it all off, lots of others got to experience that same buzz and their own personal memory of their very first fish. Right, on three, say the magic spell. Abracadabra. Abracadabra. <laughs> The perfect ending to the most fantastic week.